Okay, this video is going to be about how to use these little breakout boards George into APV calls them surfboards but you have an SOP8 or SOIC8 chip you can't very well do Manhattan construction uh, with uh, you know regular pads so you use these uh, and I'll put a link to the site on eBay where I got these. You can see that it looks pretty good. Pins 1 and 4 are a little light on uh, solder. Those are the left and right ones on the bottom. Uh, but uh, this is the second board I've done this way. And uh, the third one will come out better. So let's get on with this. Okay, you get the uh, board with all these little breakout boards on it and you break them apart. And this is, you're going to wind up with a whole bunch of these. And I uh, put them in a coin envelope. That's where I keep all the parts. It, so they won't uh, wind up all over the place. Okay, so you got your boards. I've got some, uh, the board I showed you, I uh, used uh, NE612, which is the Gilbert mixer. The 612 is used everywhere in QRP stuff. And we're going to use it in the SST and the NE4040. And I get mine from Kits and Parts. And they come in a anti-static bag. Like so, and they're 10. I guess you can get them in fives, but I bought 10. And um, they're, they're expensive everywhere. But they're in short supply, but you need them until I find an alternative. Now, you got the boards. You're going to need some paste. And uh, yeah, I know you're going to ask, and I've got it right here. I, I bought this stuff off of eBay, but I think you can find it on Amazon. I saw somebody in a video use it. It's um, solder paste uh, type XGZ40. It's 6337, which makes it, makes it eutetic. Uh, and it's made by somebody uh, in China so that's what I use it's supposed to have a plunger thing I don't know where it is but what I do is I just take a small amount and put it in the bottom of this one of these uh, one ounce uh, cups and then I have a little plastic uh, swizzle stick thing that has a flat end and I'm sorry I don't have it right here I'd go get it but I'll just, uh, you'll just have to trust me. And I just put a little dip in here and then put the swizzle stick on it and then pad, cover the little pads and you'll have to experiment just to get a thin layer. You don't want to put too much or you'll get solder bridges. Okay, now you need a hot plate. This is just an old hot plate. I don't know if I can get it all in here. It's uh, um, just a regular old hot plate and it has a temperature control which does nothing but turns it on and then when it gets to a certain level it shuts off and what I do is for this experiment I go a little past about halfway between medium and high now it's gonna it's just gonna start heating up you do not want to do it direct on the plate Okay, because the temperature across the plate is not uniform. So, what you get you, and I got one from uh, Amazon for 10 bucks. You get you a skillet, an iron skillet. Now, you can see that the first time I did it with one of these boards, I didn't have anything in here. And that's uh, some, some um, flux and uh, maybe some solder, whatever. So, you want to... Now the purpose of the skillet is, one, to get uniform heat. It's a heat sink. 
and it'll slowly heat up. Now, to not get solder and flux in, in touch with the skillet, I use a piece of blank. When I say blank, I don't mean, you know, copper plated and not etched or cut up yet. Just a piece of FR4, and this has done two boards, and you can see that it becomes discolored. So, we're going to go to like 400 degrees or whatever and you put the you put the board and you can do multiple ones you can do multiple boards on the FR4 with the paste put it on top of the hot plate with the hot plate off turn it to the midpoint between medium and high and do not do this in the house because there you know do not inhale. You're going to get some fumes. I do it in the garage with the door open and a breeze. And the breeze is blowing away from me. You can use a little fan or whatever. One, and I also have an IR thermometer, but you don't need it because you can just watch it. Now, after about five or six minutes, on the IR thermometer, I see the temperature go from room temperature 80, whatever it is, 84, I've got an air conditioned garage, so you need it because it's we're we're hitting 112, 114, 115s in the middle of June, and it's going to get worse. Anyway, start it up. It'll just go on its own. You don't have a temperature control. This is not a fancy uh, SMD soldering station. This is cheap. And we're talking real cheap. Anyway, you just watch it and you'll see it when it gets after about five or six minutes. You'll see the the paste kind of melt or become fluid. And then it's going to get to a point and it turns around. It turns out to be around a little over 390 degrees Fahrenheit. It will turn shiny and then capillary action uh, and surface tension will cause it to suck up on each one of the pads individually. Now you saw in the little prior video where these two endpoints here were a little uh, starved on solder paste. So, but the but the pads are soldered to the board. Now. When you see the the flux melt, uh, the, the solder uh, form on each one of the pads, turn the hot plate off, get you a pair of heavy duty gloves and take the skillet off the hot plate. And I have a large, well a large, I have large enough, I have a piece of paved stone. Take something that's, if you got a trivet, or something, something that'll take the heat and not put the skillet on a, you know, paint-colored desktop, uh, uh, workbench, whatever, and just let it cool. It's too hot. I don't, I'm not taking any chances, and it just it'll cool. It, it's reached the maximum temperature, and it'll immediately start to cool down, and you'll be okay. I know there's rules and regulations, but I can't follow them. I'm on the cheap here. I'm on the cheap because uh, it's the only way I'm going to get guys to do this. And that's all there is to it. Now, I've got a 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter, millimeter pad that I can use in my Manhattan projects. We're going to use it on SST. Now, this is a double sided board because it, on the opposite side, it'll do a smaller, uh, what is it? Uh, forgot what the part number is but the smaller eight pin dip now this has this has pads that connect to the pins of the chip so I don't want it touching the plane of my PCB but so I've got some more of these boards and I use the 10 step scissors shear uh, paper cutter or whatever 
and you cut this up and make you a 12 millimeter by 12 millimeter pad and you super glue this on top of it. Then you're going to super glue that combination onto your, and in place on your circuit. This FR4 does serves two purposes. Insulator to the ground plane. Number two, now I can cut my wire, interconnecting wire or component, so that there's a little bend that's just the thickness of the board. Stick it in there and hold it and solder, and then I've got my component or the lead, sorry about the shadow, uh, connected, ready to go. Or if you want, you can take the 2.54 millimeter headers and you can put two header strips in there and you can insert it into a regular IC socket, uh, the friction fit. So that's your lesson for today. Appreciate your time. Hope you learned something and hope this will uh, get you to use well, we're gonna, we don't have a choice, guys and girls. Uh, we're stuck with SMD. Uh, those of you who have um, lucky enough to have a stash of uh, pins through holes, uh, ICs, and I have some and I'm gonna use them and I got a set of boards coming that I laid out and I'll show you that in a video when I get them. They're on the plane through customers, customs and whatever. I uh, carry on. Thank you for your time. Appreciate some likes. And I hope you learned something here and it's useful. As promised, I was going to show you the breakout board or what the vendor calls a SOP8 to dip 8 adapter converter. Uh, this is what they look like up uh, close. I said it was 12 millimeters. They say 10.92. This is what the top side looks like, the bottom side. And then you can buy a 20 pack, 40 pack, or the 63 pack. You could choose over here. It says most popular. $7.85. That's for people who are trying it out. Going to do one project or saving bucks. I bought the 40 pack. And if you're really adventuresome, you can buy a 63 for $13.95. I haven't figured out the cost per board for each one of them. That's a math exercise. The vendor is Draft Craft. It's got a 99.6% positive rating and probably the 0.4% complain about something else. I don't see how you can complain about this little critter. Wish I'd invented it myself. Free shipping comes from uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Probably comes in on a port there. That's it. I love them. There may be another source I haven't searched. Thank you. End of recording.